Hello, this is Adeptus Novus, and in this video we are going to talk about the Orc Unit roster. Let us begin with the most basic Orc Infantry unit, the Gretchen. They are the Builder unit, which can also repair. Um, players of Dawn of War 1 will remember them as they were also the Builder unit over there. And they have been assigned a new role in Dawn of War 3. Um, they are also detectors now. Gretchens fulfill another role as well, which plays into the core mechanic of the Orc faction. They can also um, loot. They can use their loot ability to uh, produce new units from salvage litter across the battlefield. We'll go into the core ability of the Orc faction in another section of this video. Next up in the unit roster are the boys, or slugger boys, as they were formerly known in Dawn of War 2. Slugger boys are a melee unit and they are a cover counter. Um, Dawn of War 3 did change the cover system and the only way to counter units that are in cover is by uh, so-called cover counter units. They have normal armor, this comes into play later, I'm gonna talk about uh, armor types and um, they can improve themselves by looting scrap on the battlefield eventually becoming so-called art boys. The sloggers are very very strong as of now. I'm still thinking that Relic hasn't finished the balance right now and will easily rush down ranged units so you will always want uh, some boys or slugger boys however you want to call them around. This brings us to shooter boys. Basic ranged infantry, not a lot going for them. They also have normal armor. They can also loot scrap to be able to throw a grenade that causes knockback and very very little damage. You can already see where, there's, uh, where this loot mechanic is going. You will always need to loot stuff or in this case scrap to be able to use orc abilities. Um, this is similar to the global resource called War in Dawn of War 2, which allowed certain units to use some of their abilities. For example, stick bombers could use, uh, could use stick bombs and stun bombs only when they had enough global resource. Next up are knobs. People know knobs. They're uh, huge orcs, very very huge orcs. They're heavy infantry, they're way sturdier and stronger than slugger boys. They also count as a cover counter, but they can do way more than that. With a, with a health pool of 3000 HP, they're um, perfect for drawing enemy fire. And an ability called taunt um, allows them to taunt nearby enemies, making them the perfect a target for um, enemy ranged fire or forcing the enemy to use their ranged fire on them while all the other units of your army can close in relatively safe. They also have um, uh, an ability that is also activated by looting where they can throw a chopper blade at their target which immobilizes the target. So that's a very, very cool close-in mechanic. Moving on, we see that tank busters also make a reappearance in this game. They are your basic infantry ranged AV unit that do bonus damage to skimmers. That's gonna be very, very interesting. Right now, um, basically, you can also spam shooter boys and you will still kill vehicles, which is um, kind of counterintuitive. But there you go, tank bursts are your basic uh, ranged anti-vehicle unit. And there you can see that they also that they counter heavy armor. So vehicles would count as heavy armor. And those are the two armor types in your game. Looting scrap allows them to strap a bomb to a pet squig and send them into the enemy. So it's basically like a like a guided grenade. If you're looking for crowd control units, look no further because you have Def Gun Looters, they also make a reappearance. 
Death Gun looters have all also been in Dawn of War 2. Um, they are an infantry based ranged unit with heavy weaponry and if you loot scrap with them, there we go again with the loot mechanic, you can also slow down units with their ranged attack. They counter normal armor only, but having told you already that there's only two armor types in this game, this is basically everything that is not a very heavy um, melee unit or a vehicle. So since this game um, is on a much larger scale than Dawn of War 2, Def Gun Looters are a very good unit to, to always have around. Next on is the first vehicle in the unit roster, namely the truck. The truck is a transport unit, it's also been in the past games. Um, it has a very funny mechanic of deploying um, its units or the units inside it uh, to the field. It can throw them at a target position and causing a stun on enemy units that are hit by the, the thrown units. If you have watched the Masters of War video released by Relic, um, if you watch the last few seconds there's actually a uh, short clip of a truck deploying its units. Um, it can also be upgraded and of course it has a loot mechanic so that it can gain a shield. It has heavy armor, I've told you before vehicles mostly have, I think exclusively have heavy armor and it deals pathetic range damage, it's only 13 DPS, it's not supposed to be a combat vehicle, it's only like a transport vehicle. Orcs have other vehicles for that. One of the new Orc units in Dawn of War 3 is the Defcopter. The Defcopter is a so-called skimmer unit. Skimmer units can traverse ravines and any obstacles in Dawn of War 3 on the map with ease, making them extremely mobile and very good for hit and run tactics, or uh, actually foregoing any ranged artillery and just bypassing any base uh, defensive positions easily. They are a ranged unit and they have heavy armor, so keep that in mind. And they do counter normal armor, they have very decent range DPS, and of course they also have a loot ability that allows them to fly in a target direction and cause damage at the same time. Our next vehicle is the Killer Can, making a reappearance. Everybody knows it from Dawn of War 1. Dawn of War 2 scrapped the Killer Can in favor of the Death Dread. The Killer Can makes a comeback here. It's a walker unit. Interestingly enough, it's a long ranged anti vehicle unit, but it deals heavy, heavy melee damage. Not in the form of that the damage type is heavy melee, but it deals melee damage. It can also fire rockets, and it can increase the number of rockets that it can carry by looting scrap. So one can see where, while this uh, is supposed to be an anti-vehicle unit since it will fire rockets. Speaking of the Death Dread, here it is also a melee walker, a very slow one as well, but it has more HP as far as I can tell and it has a very interesting damage type. Um, I forgot to mention that the Killer Can also has a true damage um, damage type, so I'm not so sure whether it's going to be explained further. So this, there seem to be some armor and damage type mechanics which are not yet fully revealed. Um, this one has armor piercing melee damage, whatever, whatever that's going to be, but you can already see that it's, it's a lot more heavy hitting than the killer can. Um, on death, it seems to be uh, like the great unclean one in Dawn of War 2, it will explode causing damage to all surrounding units and it gains a shield through looting scrap that increases its speed. This is a very interesting vehicle indeed. Next up is our first tank in the Orc Rasta. It's the big track truck, I'm not sure, with a super cannon. It is a variation of the um, truck that we all know from uh, Dawn of War 2, 
but it's slower and it's an artillery piece. The main cannon, the super cannon, actually fires um, artillery weaponry and it is extremely long range. Now it's also dealing armor piercing uh, damage, so I'm not quite sure what it's exactly supposed to counter. Whether it's a long range disruption unit, I'm not sure about that. It seems to be uh, adding disruption to its to its uh, firing modes, or it has a firing mode which adds disruption, but it seems to require a setup. So I'm thinking it's mm, a little bit of both. Like it can counter tanks since it counters heavy armor, but it could also be used as a disruption unit which is uh, quite strong if you ask me. This concludes the uh, unit lineup. As you can see there are not as many units as there are in Dawn of War 2 and Dawn of War 1, but the, this game is supposed to function very differently. It's supposed to be a hybrid of both, so we're gonna see how this one pans out. I'm not so sure yet. Um, next up we're gonna talk about the org faction mechanics.